Welcome to episode 3 of Animal Workshop, where I film animals in the wild and build something in the workshop. Uh, this episode I'm finishing off the pole camera, uh, you might remember the pan and tilt head from last week, and I'm visiting Mount Field National Park. Mount Field National Park is probably Australia's best loved national park, mainly because it's Australia's oldest. Mount Field is an easy one hour's drive north of Hobart. In the next couple of episodes I'll be looking at a few other places up there including Medina, Junae Caves and the Styx Big Tree Reserve. From the early 1900s until probably the 1970s, Mount Field was a weekend excursion destination. You could catch the train and just go up for a day. Uh, the aim was to have a picnic along the river, to play a bit of sport, kick a football, uh, visit Russell Falls. And it was all about getting away from the coastal heat, uh, taking in the cool mountain air and the crystal clean, clean streams. In recent times, the philosophy has been to present it as a pristine, untouched wilderness. Apart from the wombats you might see at the top of the mountain, um, it's in the car park down at the bottom where you're likely to see the most of uh, the wildlife that Mount Field has to offer. Uh, the bird life, the wallabies, uh, paddy melons in particular. And of course the platypuses in the streams the black and white cockatoos, as well as the currawongs that are always present in the background. But my personal favourite is the, uh, the native hen, the Tasmanian native hen. Uh, this is a fantastic little bird. It's got the most subtle but beautiful colours and the, the searing red eyes. But also, uh, when you spend a bit of time with these birds, they you take on a whole character of their own. They're very gregarious. Uh, they're a you know, family-based animal. Um, and they're always getting up to hijinks. You can hear them coming miles off. These are, uh, there was four in all crossing this creek. I could hear them coming down the hill opposite about five minutes before they turn up at the creek. The public debate uh, regarding animals is always solely focused on the endangered and the exotic. Uh, and it leaves birds like this uh, without any voice whatsoever. And I think these are some of the most interesting animals of all. And if you want to see a platypus in the wild, Mount Field is a pretty good place to start, particularly down the lower part. All you need to do is get there very early in the morning, I mean dawn, uh, and sit very still and very quiet by the side of a river. To film platypuses or take still images, you need to be able to uh, operate in very low light situations. This is where modern DSLR cameras uh, come into their own. This clip was filmed at 12,800 ISO, um, an unbelievably high number, and you can see some graining in the image. Um, but 10 years ago, this image wouldn't have been able to be taken. To get these sorts of images of platypuses, I set up before dawn uh, and open the camera right up, put the ISO right up high, then slowly just start checking the ISO back as light starts to appear. This image is a 2400 ISO and uh, the sun's just come up but there's forest cover obviously and cloud cover as well but it's a usable image. As platypuses generally aren't out in the middle of the day when the bright light and thus vibrant colours are around uh, you have to work at these sorts of ISOs. Uh, here's a film of a platypus almost out in the middle of the day uh, in a lovely little pond, you know, only 10 minutes walk from the car park. That's enough for the wildlife, now back into the workshop. You remember last episode, I built a pan and tilled head for a pole. Um, this week I'm finishing the pole off. So what I need to do is to cut the pole into three sections so I can fit it in the back of the car and build latches so I can put it back together again.
On the end of the pole, I'm connecting the speed controllers, which are a servo city uh, device. There's four channels in this one. I'm only using two, obviously. So this is the clip that clips into the top of the tripod, and I've made it nice and long so that uh, um, I've got plenty of adjustment there. And I've laid out a piece of uh, carbon fibre there to uh, go over the top of the pole so I can adjust it on the pole as well. Um, this is the poles going together and just snapping into place. And the end uh, arrangement where the um, panel tilt, tilt head hangs from. Thanks very much for watching right to the end of episode 3 and I'll be along shortly with uh, episode 4. Now what I'm going to do in episode 4 is to go up to Juno Caves and see if I can get some really good footage of some platypus in that sort of period of a month. So look forward to that. In the meantime I'm available for uh, any video or filming work um, statewide, uh, anything to do with agriculture, uh, mining, forestry, uh, wind farms, animals. Um, Basically anything that doesn't involve a lot of people, I'll be pretty happy. I'll be keen to do it. So um, just give me a ring, uh, the number's at the end of this video, and I'll look forward to seeing you all next time. Thanks very much. <laughs>